Lies that people stuck with. Story one. Uh, this is a long one, but since it backfired on me, I think it may be of interest. So, I live alone, I'm divorced, because my ex-wife has been known to take mail out of my mailbox, I got myself a P.O. box at the post office. Now, ten years later, all my mail still goes to the P.O. box. An added benefit is that every time I move, I just happen to move no more than 15 minutes from that post office, meaning I never have to change mailing addresses. The DMV here is just a bunch of idiots. Ten years ago, I went to get my new driver's license. They asked for my address, and I gave them the P.O. box address. No, they say, we need your street address. But I don't want any mail coming to my home. I want it to all go to the P.O. box. What I ended up with is a driver's license that looks like this. Womp 1970-123 Main Street, P.O. Box 456 Anytown, New York 55555. Any normal human looking at that would be confused. But three officials at the DMV assure me that's how it should be printed. Name, street address, P.O. Box, city, state, zip. But in my case, the street address is not in the same zip code as the P.O. Box. So the zip code is correct for the P.O. Box, but there's no such address, 123 Main, at that zip code. Every time I've had to get something done at the DMV, they assure me it's okay. And lo and behold, the stuff they mail me does come to my P.O. Box, so that's good. But the insanity of the fact that they require a street address, but it's not checked for validity since there is no 123 Main Street at zip 55555, is just infuriating. I need this darn street address, but it's not real. So in silent protest, the last time I moved, I didn't bother updating the DMV. The new street address would have been incorrect because of the zip code, and the mail still comes to the P.O. box, so why bother telling the DMV my new address? And so for the last four years, my driver's license, my car registrations, my car titles, all have the old street address. Well, last week I went to buy a new car, and I had to finance it with car payments. I sign all kinds of paperwork at the dealership. Yes, that is my correct address, knowing that it's dead wrong. I take the car home. Two days later, the dealership called me. The bank has a problem with the loan. They want me to fax over a copy of a utility bill to prove where you live. Oh, crap, I thought. They're on to me. Mind you, I wasn't neglecting to update my address in order to commit fraud. It was only out of silent protest because of the ridiculousness. But the bank didn't give a crap about that. I knew that I messed up. There was no way out of this, and I quickly went on to the DMV site and changed the address for my license, registrations, and titles. Then I printed my cable bill, electric bill, and homeowner's policy, all with the correct street address, and I went back to the dealership to talk to the finance people. I explained that I forgot to change my address with the DMV, and I never got around to it. Why did you sign all the paperwork saying you live at the wrong address? Well, sir, when the sale was finalized, and I realized that I forgot to update my address, I didn't want to have to go through it all over again, so I didn't speak up. That was a mistake, and I'm very sorry. It took them three more days, but they finally called and said they had straightened everything out with the bank, and I could, of course, keep the car. But those three days, I was in terror. I mean, I signed paperwork saying, I hereby declare under penalty, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure if they wanted to, the dealership could put me in deep trouble with some governmental agency. I wouldn't have gone to jail, but lying is lying, fraud is fraud, and I'm sure I could have been in some deep crap with credit cards, my landlord, my credit report, who knows. Story 2. Here we go. When I was in 6th grade, my buddy and I attempted to skip school. We planned that the next day he would stay home sick. I would use this landline phone I had in my room, which had a hold feature, to what I thought would tie up the line all day so that the school couldn't get a hold of my mom, who worked from home. This is obviously long before cell phones were a thing. I would go to my buddy's house and we would play Genesis all day. So it turns out that phones don't work like that. We are hanging out and suddenly I hear a car outside. I run downstairs and hide while my buddy answers the door to my crying mother who asks if he's seen me. He lies and says no. When she goes, I come up and decide that I'm in big trouble and need to cover it. I planned to say some teenagers from the nearby high school were picking on me and chased me around a neighborhood I didn't know well. I head home and run into my dad, who was looking for me. I gave him the story, and he seemed to buy it. He takes me home where my mom is on the phone to the police. She had my school picture out and is crying. She puts me on the phone and makes me tell my story to the cop. He sounds skeptical, but he accepts the story. 
My mom is happy I wasn't abducted by serial R's. She then asks if I want to go back to school in the afternoon. I say I do because it'll get me away from being grilled about it anymore at home. But at school, I get grilled by my teacher and the principal. My friend informs me the entire school went on lockdown when I was missing because of potential abduction. I had to keep going with the teenager story for years. I finally told my mom years later when I was an adult, and she was pretty mad. But I was past getting in trouble for it. Story 3. I can't think of any really big ones, but there's one weird one. In college, a group of people I didn't know well were talking about this guy they'd gone to high school with who looked exactly like me, to the point that they were convinced I was him, freaking with them by pretending to be someone else. The only difference was that my doppelganger wore glasses, and I didn't. So in order to mess with them a little bit, I said that I'd worn glasses in high school, but didn't anymore. I'd never worn glasses. One of the people there that I did go to high school with, well, remembered what I'd said and didn't believe me. So the next time she bumped into my best friend from high school, she asked whether I'd worn glasses. He backed me up instantly. I figured he'd just figured something was up and decided to back me up. A decade later, with the acquisition of good vision insurance, I had my eyes checked and actually did wind up getting glasses with a very mild prescription. Upon seeing me with them for the first time, my best friend said, Oh, wow, I haven't seen you with glasses on since high school. I've never been sure whether he backed me up and then somehow internalized that backup and then really believed that I wore glasses in high school, or whether he just always somehow believed that I'd worn glasses. I've chosen to use it to very subtly mess with him by photoshopping glasses onto my face in old pictures that he's going to see. I did it recently when his sister asked me for some photos to use for his upcoming wedding, and it'll probably never actually pay off, but I privately think it's hilarious. Story 4 A little bit of a backstory on this one. When I was originally starting to hunt as a kid with my grandpa and his cousin, they always told me that once I bag my first buck, I have to take a bite out of the heart. Initiation, they called it. So part of me was freaking terrified that I might become deceased, but the other part realized how ballsy it would have been if I really did it, so naturally I started telling my friends what would happen if I got my first buck. That day eventually came when I was 12 years old. I was so excited that I finally bagged my first buck that I totally forgot about what my grandpa and cousin have been telling me for years now. I just couldn't wait for them to get to the site where I got it. We start field dressing the buck, my cousin is showing me how to do it, and I'm trying my best to keep up with him, and my grandpa speaks up. He shines his camera and says, So, are you ready to eat? My stomach freaking dropped. I was immediately panicking. I gotta do it, it's initiation. So between my gagging and near meltdown, my grandpa and cousin start laughing their butts off, like cry laughing. I asked them what was so funny, and they told me they've been bullcrapping me for the past couple of years. It's a lie they tell kids in the family just to get them worked up over bagging their first buck. I was so freaking confused, you have no idea. But at the moment, I didn't really care. I just bagged my first buck. So I took a photo with the heart, which made it look like I was about to take a bite, left the gut pile for the coyotes, and went back to camp to start skinning the buck. You know what the first thing I told my friends was when I got back? Yeah, stupid lie. Means literally nothing. If anything, it makes me look like a freaking moron. But hey, I've been lying about this since like the 8th grade, so might as well keep it up. A couple other lies that I picked up in this story are the age and the timing. 8th grade, people are usually 15 years old, and you don't start hunting until you're at least 12. That's when you can get your license. At least that's how it is in the US. Story 5. Oh dear lord, here we go. Started my job about a year ago, and we get a 30 minute break, which I wanted to split into two breaks of 15 minutes, or three breaks of 10 minutes, so I can smoke. My manager said this was fine. Later on, a coworker asked me why I split my breaks, as it's not long enough to eat properly. Me. Oh, I don't eat during the day. Coworker thought this was an interesting fact, so told everyone. Same coworker asked me if I wanted a cup of coffee, and I said yes, but asked for honey in it instead of sugar, as it's healthier for you, and I was on a diet at the time. He asks if I'm some kind of health freak, and if I drink herbal teas and stuff. Me, who didn't hear him right, yes. Later that week, my manager ordered pizza as a treat. I asked for cheese and tomato, as I don't like meaty pizza. My coworker asks me if I'm vegetarian. Me, I just really don't like meat. I meant on pizza, but he didn't take it that way and thought I didn't eat any meat. 
So I'm super awkward person and didn't want to correct this coworker. One year down the line, I'm sneaking out eating my ham sandwiches on my 15 minute lunch breaks and my coworkers only ever make my tea with honey. How do I end this lie? Or has it gone too far? Please help. Story 6. When I was in a frat a few years back, I tried coke for the first time. It honestly didn't do anything, but I was extremely wasted, and at the time, I often acted erratically for attention. Instead of just playing off that the coke didn't work, I kept twitching around when talking, as if I were actually coked out, how I imagined being coked out looked like. As a result, my roommates freaked out and thought I was overdosing. They had our fraternity president come downstairs to see if I needed any intervention. I remember playing it off and twitching forcefully, but spouting stuff such as, I feel like Superman, which was nonsense. It was hilarious to blackout me, but the next day my roommates thought they saved my life and that I had almost passed away before their very eyes. One of them was my best friend, and he almost started crying about how scary it was. I just went forward with it and played it off as though I almost overdosed on cocaine and lived to tell the tale. My two roommates still are convinced I was a lost cause, and I never had the heart to tell them. I was really just being a belligerent, wasted idiot. This story has kind of followed me ever since. I quit drinking for a while after that. Tried coke a few more times, though. Still didn't get the appeal. Story 7. Long ago, Discovery Channel had a special on prehistoric pigs. It aired on April 1st, and being a 12-year-old who was smart and knew how to think critically, that is, didn't think to look into the special and find out if it was real deal, as I thought I knew everything, I assumed it was a joke show put on by the channel. A few months later, they re-aired the special. My dad happened to be watching it, and, nerd that he is, called me in excitedly to show me this prehistoric pig programming. I scoffed and said, Dad, it's fake. It was made for April Fool's, and now they're showing it again. Oh, he said, and laughed and laughed. Here's the thing. I was wrong. The show was about a real animal that really existed. I discovered this a few years later on the internet. But by now, my dad had started using these fake giant pigs as a conversation starter. Not only that, but he's flipped the story a bit. Now he's the one who saw the show on April 1st, and 23 years later, the man still brings up this freaking show because he thinks the idea of what he calls dinosaur pigs is hilarious. I thought of telling him, but it's too deep now. I go to my grave with this one. Story 8. Not me, but my hairdresser told me this a few months ago, and I couldn't stop laughing. A few years ago, he and his girlfriend at the time went on vacation to a resort somewhere in Spain. On the first day of arriving, they got talking to another couple they met in the hotel, and just for a joke, he pretended to be American by putting on an accent. He's English. He said he wasn't even sure why he did it. He was just goofing around, and he thought he'd never see these people again, so it was just a throwaway thing. However, they ended up being pretty good friends with this couple and saw quite a lot of them over the course of the vacation. I guess it would have been too embarrassing or weird to come clean and tell them the truth, so he just had to go with it and put on an American accent every time he saw them. Oh, that's funny. That's actually what I'm doing. I'm from New Zealand. For a whole week he did this. In addition to this, he was also going through some problems in his relationship, can't think why, so basically spent the whole trip either arguing with his girlfriend or having to get in character and pretend to be American for no other reason than his own stupidity. He said it was the worst vacation of his life and was more stressed out than being home at work. Story 9. Not mine, but my grandparents both have birthdays only a few days apart, June 3rd and June 6th, with my grandma's birthday coming first. When they were in their first few months of dating, my grandpa told her that they were going to celebrate on June 3rd for the both of us. This being their first time really discussing birthdays, my grandma took this to mean that they were both born on the same day. She played it up. Oh, we're soulmates. Look at us. Born on the same day of the same year. That kind of thing. My grandpa didn't realize his mistake until she told him happy birthday on June 3rd, but she was so happy about it he couldn't bring himself to correct her and was just like, Huh, yeah, cool. We were born on the same day. This went on for years, with him actively hiding his birthday mail from her and pretending that his folks were calling him on June 3rd rather than June 6th. She didn't find out until over a decade later, when they were married, and she was mortified that for the last 12 years, she'd been celebrating his birthday on the wrong day. Not really a lie, per se, but I can't believe he let it run for that long. Story 10. Told this girl I work with that I was the bassist for the Goo Goo Dolls, 
story time. We were talking about this and that, and she ended up saying something about how she was runway material. And I told her that she could be a part-time model, maybe. I forgot what she said next, but I replied with, My rock and roll days may be over, but I'm still way out of your league. She said, What? Were you in some crappy garage band? And I told her that back then, we all had crappy garage bands. Then I start to tell her that we were kind of big, went on Letterman a few times, played a show in Toronto, she keeps asking questions, and I keep making stuff up. She has me hum a few songs, and a week later she asked me if I was in the Goo Goo Dolls, because a song I hummed kind of sounded like Name, and I mentioned that Twister movie that had Long Way Down in it. I never told her the truth, but she doesn't ask about it much anymore. Story 11 the majority of the general public all have their understanding of what colorblindness is, and I, a female who does not see blue, do not fit it. So I felt I was constantly almost attacked about how credible my colorblindness is by new people. One day I started a new job and realized none of the people there knew me, and no one was going to assume I'm colorblinded, so I started to pretend that I could see. I can generally guess when something is blue. I used to be able to see it, or notice a strange coloring or absence, and deftly dance around it from there. I only intended to be at this job temporarily, and wanted to feel normal again. Well, turns out this job was a great fit, and they made a full-time position for me, and now I'm here, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, living my full-time life. I have no idea how to tell the truth without reverting back to the original annoying discussion, and eventually having to sigh loudly and explain, because I was an alcoholic, okay? So, we march on. Story 12. In second grade, a friend whispered my name during quiet time, and I jokingly told the teacher that a ghost is talking to me. Later that day, I was sent to the special counselor's room, asking me about talking to ghosts. Jokingly, I continued lying about how I downloaded a ghost radar app from those text the number to get this crap on my dad's flip phone, and how they were always close, and I just casually talked to them. I went with a lie for a few days, cause how deep I was, until one night my parents came home and just started screaming at me, what the frick are you telling your school? You see and talk to unalive people, what the heck? And my brother and sister were just cracking up, while my parents told me how I could be taken to mental hospital if I didn't stop lying, and it was funny until they kept mentioning I'd be taken away. We laugh about it a lot, but god dang, that was my finest work of art. Story 13 I once got sort of unapproved access to a VIP area at a venue, and the person who got me in probably would have gotten in trouble if it was found out that they did. A fairly major musician was playing. This was the lounge area where their family and friends were watching the show, only about 20 people. When people asked why I was there, I said I was related to the owner of the venue, figured this was boring enough but would stop the questions. Instead, this really nice group of people all started complimenting me on the venue and talking to me more about it and my family. They were really awesome people, and we chatted the rest of the evening. They invited me to spend the upcoming holiday weekend at their beach house with the band. I did. No one ever found out I have no connection to the venue and don't even know who actually owns it. Story 14 There's a guy who I used to work with at a corporate chain steakhouse while I was going to college that had a bit of a whopper. We stayed up all night partying, and he didn't wake up in time for his opening shift the following day. When he finally got up, he was two hours late and had a grip of missed calls. He was about a month away from graduating and had worked the same job all through college, so he was worried that he was going to get fired and wouldn't be able to use the job reference, so his solution was to call in and tell the boss he had been in a car accident on his way to work. Now, this temporarily solved the problem, but to really sell the story, he ended up hiding his truck in a friend's garage and working his next four weeks of serving shifts with a fake full arm cast. Brandon, you're a freaking legend. Brandon may be a legend, but Brennan has a mangina. Story 15. When I was dating my husband, his mom wanted us to stay the night. I really, really didn't want to. Told her I needed to go home due to not feeling well and thinking I had a fever. She offered me Tylenol, and I said I couldn't have it because I was allergic. Not sure why I said it. Anyways, my husband overheard it, and I later didn't want to tell him I had lied to his mom. We are married now, and I recently had to go to the ER due to breaking a bone and was in so much pain I couldn't talk. He told the nurse I was allergic to Tylenol. He then went to my surgery and doctor's appointments with me after that, and I had to continue to say I'm allergic to Tylenol. My Tylenol allergy is now all over my medical records. Story 16. 
Not me, but a girl I became friends with on a study abroad trip to Japan got asked by her host family where she was from. They misused English, and it came out something like, Where did you leave from? instead. Being from the middle of New Jersey somewhere, she answered, Newark, which was where she had departed from. Of course, these nice people from rural Japan, having never heard of Newark, heard New York. So they were so excited that they had gotten a host kid from New York City that they promptly told all friends all the time over the course of the month we were there. She never had the heart to correct them. So for that month, she was a proud New Yorker. Story 17. I had to use my mom's van for a semester in my second year of university. One of my classmates saw this and started poking fun at me. He asked, what, are you a single mother now? So I decided to go with it and said, no, nah, my wife passed away and I'm a single father with twin daughters. He got pretty apologetic and I thought that was that. That is, until he started asking me about them every class period. I panicked and kept the lie going, even printing out a stock photo of twin girls to put in my wallet. To this day, I still get messages from him asking how the twins are doing. They just celebrated their seventh birthday and love soccer and school. Story 18. I moved to a new city when I was in sixth grade, and on the same day, two other boys started, and they both knew how to skateboard. So I lied and said I did too. Then, for months, I lied about being able to skateboard to them and other kids at the school, and I never came clean because I didn't want anyone to call me a poser. So I bought skater boy clothes and a skateboard and learned how to skateboard because I lied about knowing how to skateboard. I've been skating since then. I'm 28 now. Story 19. Last year, on the first day of a month-long rotation in medical school, I was telling a story and accidentally referred to my dog as my daughter quickly did the mental evaluation of how embarrassing it would be to correct myself versus rolling with it, and just decided to go with it, and pretended I had a kid for the rest of the month. I didn't purposefully bring it up or anything, but if someone mentioned it, it was October, was asked about taking my kid trick-or-treating, etc. I would just vaguely agree and not elaborate on anything. Story 20. One of my colleagues, as a way to mess with her in-laws, decided to tell them their son, her husband, was obsessed with Elvis and would love Elvis-related presents for Christmas and birthdays. He had no interest in Elvis at all, but through politeness did not question his parents when they suddenly started giving him Elvis albums, movies, t-shirts, mugs, etc. Well, it's 20 years later, their house is full of Elvis memorabilia. His wife still thinks it's hilarious, and he's too far into the prank to correct them. Story 21 that I could play the piano. I never thought it would come up, and that I was safe with my lie. It did come up, more often than I thought it would. I had to make up an excuse to not play, and people started to think I was lying about knowing how to play. Eventually, I took some lessons, so that way, if it came up again, I could actually start playing something, and not look like I'm completely full of crap. It paid off, and after I moved from the area, I never told anyone I could play piano again. Story 22 when I was 10, another kid on my school bus asked me if I played World of Warcraft. I lied and said yes. I spent the entire rest of the year before and after school on the bus talking about a game I never played in my life. One day, I was invited over when he made me log in. I entered some account and claimed I forgot my password, spending the next 30 minutes trying to debug by resetting a password to an account that doesn't exist. Oh my god, what was I doing? What were you doing is correct. RuneScape is clearly superior to World of Warcraft. Story 23. Years ago, Canada beat the United States in the Olympics in hockey. I had a couple co-workers that had been gloating about how the US was going to kick those Canadian butts for a week beforehand, so naturally I teased them the day after the Canadians won. What, are you Canadian or something? Actually, yes, I have dual citizenship. They told a bunch of other co-workers and it spread around. I had to look up Canadian facts to keep my story straight. Story 24. Used to get my nails done when I lived in China with a friend. We told elaborate lies about her rich husband and my useless boyfriend to the ladies who did our nails as a way to practice vocabulary in Mandarin. I was leaving in like a few months, so it was easy, but she had to find pictures of babies and weddings and dresses to use. I just had to remember that my boyfriend was a doctor and probably cheating on me, and she had to choose baby names. Story 25. An older man at the church I go to misheard my name as Rachel. When I tried to correct him, he didn't hear my actual name. He later had his wife approach me and ask my name. I just said Rachel, thinking it would be fine. They told the entire church my name was Rachel, and it stuck. I'm eight years into this Rachel lie in a church. Great. Story 26. 
told my husband when we first met that he couldn't talk to my grandparents because they only spoke German. They did speak a lot of German, but their English was fine. I just didn't want them to know I was seeing an Irish Catholic guy. They were very strict Lutherans. Now I'm 20 years into the marriage and so screwed. Story 27. My first job out of college was in local government, where I worked pretty closely with a bunch of elected officials. Being 22, I was pretty intimidated at the time and really wanted them to like me. Somehow, one of them got the idea that my name was Chris, and it is not Chris. That guy called me Chris for six months before he lost re-election. Story 28. In high school, I told a girl I was from West Philadelphia, born and raised, but I had to move to my current state because of a fight. She was actually from West Philadelphia and would talk to me about how good it was to meet someone from there. I avoided talking to her as much as I could, which wasn't too hard, as I had horrible social skills as is. Clearly, on the playground is not where he spent most of his days. Story 29. I told someone I was a mixed Dutch-Spanish, and now I'm so deep into it that I even got the town and all. It's pretty bad, and people go all like, yeah, you can see it, your hair and body shape, etc. I wish I could get out of it, but 12-year-old me freaked this up bad. Going strong for seven years now. Story 30. My boyfriend, now husband, told me he went to grad school but never graduated. I found out around 10 years into us dating that it was a giant lie he had said to impress me. The only reason he came clean was because his mother found out and told me. Story 31. I just got out of it this past year, but when I was seven, I touched the Stanley Cup. I realized years later I was telling everyone I kissed it, but I didn't. I just touched it. I don't know when or why the lie started, but I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. Story 32. I told my friends I was colorblind to only the color orange. For some reason, they all believed me and would point out orange things to me and laugh at me while my girlfriend and I would be laughing on the inside. Door hinge. Story 33. I'm not sure if this counts, but the girl at the front desk of my gym has been calling me Justin for like six years. My name isn't Justin. That's not my name. They call me Stacy. Story 34. I told a Senate Judiciary Committee that boofing means flatulence and that Devil's Triangle is a drinking game. Story 35. What's a potato will always win? Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.